has prospered for 230 years because of checks and balances, you have a strong executive, you have a judicial branch, you have a legislative branch. God understood that male aggression is a very good thing. Men, male aggression means that men can cut down forests and create civilizations. They can clear swamps. But male aggression untamed by the feminine nurturing instinct is, is frightening. And that's where the checks and balances are. Each one, men have their masculinity, women have their femininity. And Judaism always understood the need to glorify women. That's why God says to Abraham, everything that Sarah tells you, you must listen to her. And there's no, there's no precedent in the history of apocalyp apocalyptic literature where the founder of a religion is commanded by the deity to listen to his wife. Do you know that the Arizal said, the greatest Jewish mystic of all time, he wrote in the 1430s that Mashiach would not come until a generation of men who listened to their wives would arise. Because what is Mashiach? It's an era of peace. If men listen to their wives, they beat their swords into plowshares. In America, we've had the Million Mom March, giant protests against handgun deaths. It's always the women. In Israel, half the protests of trying to end war are from the wives. We need to recapture the sacred feminine. Why do you think the book, The Da Vinci Code, was so successful? Because The Da Vinci Code was all about Christians yearning for a more feminine role in Christianity. Because Christianity suffers from one master flaw, which is when God came down to earth, he was a man. So along comes Dave Brown, Dan Brown and says, you know what? Jesus actually married Mary Magdalene. They had children. She was his equal. And the Catholic Church has now tried to ban the book, literally. One of the cardinals has tried to... But look at the impact this book has made. And you know why, folks? Because people are yearning for the feminine. You'll notice when the masculine and the feminine lead to real love, the creation of life, when one plus one equals one, you'll notice that there is no equality of the sexes. They're not side by side. Rather, men are lines, obviously, anatomically. Women are circles anatomically, which is why when you put them together in marriage, you get the perfect ten, completion, according to Kabbalah. Men have, a, men have a very linear orientation in life, very focused on, you know, goals. Women have a circular, cyclical orientation, very focused on things like intimacy, relationships. But notice when the husband and wife finally come together to create life, that they are not side by side. The line is enveloped by the circle, which is a very powerful Kabbalistic metaphor. The feminine is predominant. The line is enveloped by the circle. Isha to so big Geber was the ancient messianic prophecy. That when the Mashiach came, the feminine would be exalted. And men would learn to be more nurturing and more domesticated. But instead, because we have so corrupted femininity, <coughs> you know what we got instead? Instead of a more feminine world where women are honored, where women's minds are appreciated, where women's hearts are appreciated, we now have, we instead got queer eye for the straight guy. <laughs> We have, what is queer for the straight guy? I hope this all concludes so I can take your questions. What is it? It's a show that has two basic premises, everything we talked about tonight. And this has been hugely successful in every country that it's appeared. Premise number one is that every heterosexual man is an ape. He is an uncultured, uncivilized brute. He's got one eyebrow, two brain cells, he smells like his horse, and he lives in something that looks like a stable. He doesn't know how to treat a woman, but which is fine, that's the way men always were. And then a man would get married and his wife would teach him, before I give a lecture, my wife usually walks over and brushes the lint off my, off my suit jacket. When I first started dating, I didn't know how to treat a woman. I took my wife to a, this is a true story actually. I took her to this restaurant. Who knew without holding the door? By the way, the door closed, it smashes her in the nose. There's like blood gushing everywhere. So my wife taught me, actually, you know, if you could, not break my nose. Um, <laughs> but you know what's so fascinating about Kuyak the Street Guy? The premise is that all heterosexual men, they don't know how to make chocolate mousse, they, they, they're, they're hairy, they... but this is what's so fascinating. Who rescues them? Who is the straight man's Messiah? Gay men. Why not women? Because men have no respect for women. Because, come on! You mean if Britney Spears came to me and said, you know, Shmuel, you shouldn't really burp at the dinner table, say, you are lecturing me about manners? Britney? Or Paris Hilton? Or Madonna? You're disgusting! You're loathsome! You have no dignity! You're lecturing me? So the whole show is based around the idea that the last feminine presence in our society are gay men. 
<laughs> they're the only ones who even want to get married these days. <laughs> In America, every straight man, as soon as his, his girlfriend says, look, we've now been dating for 714 years. <laughs> you know, the, the time may have come and he hears marriage. Have always been the abused wife of the nations of the world. They've beaten us and kicked us, and yet we've never given up our belief in being soft and open. Look at Israel. I'm personally opposed to any more territorial concessions to the Arabs. I just feel it hasn't gotten anywhere. But however your whatever your opinion is on that, look at how much Israel refuses to be corrupted by cynicism. They've been lied to so many times by the Arabs and so many pieces that they still believe in peace. It's an amazing thing. The woman in them will not give up. They refuse to become another male belligerent that just wants to fight and kill because we Jews are just too feminine for that. That's why our greatest men were always praised in feminine terms. Moses says, I am a nursemaid. King David <coughs> spent his time playing a harp in a lair. Our great Men were never warriors, they were teachers that raised the generation. And we should return to that. We must raise a generation of Jewish men who know to honor women. We must purge all womanizing, certainly from Jewish society. You must raise sons that know how to honor women. A man that takes a woman to bed dishonors her. It, 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 it breaches the, the gentlemanly contract, the coffin to being a gentleman. Gentlemen, don't do that. I, tr I truly hope that the five daughters I'm raising into this society will be raised into a world that cherishes and values women. Because if it doesn't, then I have failed them as a father. Because if I can't raise them into that world, then I have failed them as a father. Thank you very much. Is there anybody who'd like to ask uh, Rabbi Shmini any questions or make any comments? The men are silent, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> The question is uh, about marriage. Is it a uh, covenant or a custom? Contract. Contract. <laughs> is marriage a covenant or a contract? Uh, I think it's both. Much more covenant than contract, but it does have contractual obligations. Uh, and Judaism was always insistent that a woman's contractual needs be met in a marriage so that a man can never take advantage of a woman. You know, one of the things that I, and that's very important, that it not just be a covenant. It's not, not just the spiritual side, but the contractual side. One of the things I write in this book is how, is the dishonor that men bring to their wives by making them into the cleaners. <laughs> the dishonor that men makes, bring to their wives by making them into the cleaners. You may be a man who doesn't, who isn't good at cleaning up after himself. Fair enough, a lot of men are not. Well, you know what? Then take a larger part of your income and pay someone to come and clean the house several times a week. So that your wife doesn't feel that she is nothing but a means to an end. That she is the cleaner. Because no one respects their cleaner. You're nice to the cleaner, you buy them a Christmas present. But no one, no one is no one no one respects their cleaner because the cleaner is is is, is a means to an end. They're not an end enough themselves. So it's important for there to be the contractual side. The contractual side says that there are certain things a wife does and there are certain things a wife does not do. It would be nice if we never had to contractualize these things, but human nature is such that we do, which is why we have a ksuba. And a ksuba details the exact rights that a woman has in America. <coughs> and, and, and speaking of making a woman into a means rather than an end, by the way, parenthetically, I said that uh, uh, you know, pornography is a whole other subject, so, and I haven't 